let me start by uh, thanking uh, the organizers of this function, in particular Jackie, who I think must have invited me because she happens to, to know me personally. You, the young people gathered here, can do towards the fulfillment of the obligation <coughs> of the Constitutional Court, or perhaps even courts generally, because before litigation comes to the Constitutional Court, it must start somewhere. But my focus, of course, is the Constitutional Court, because that is where I see that indeed. As a result, the Constitutional Court was born, and it was enjoined to perform the crucial task. Public opinion may have some relevance to the inquiry whether the death penalty constitutes cruel, inhuman, or degrading punishment. But in itself, it is no substitute for the duty vested in the courts to interpret the Constitution and to uphold its provisions and a retreat from the new legal order established by the Constitution. By the same token, the issue of the constitutionality of capital punishment cannot be referred to a referendum in which a majority view would prevail over the wishes of any minority. The very reason for, the, for, for establishing the new legal order and for vesting the power of judicial review of all legislation in the courts was to protect the rights of minorities and others. Equally, however, the court must be careful to know its limits and avoid intruding into realms reserved for the executive or legislative arms of state. This is so because the doctrine of separation of powers is one of the pillars of our constitutional <coughs> democracy. This doctrine enjoins courts to give due, and the operative word is due, deference to the areas of function of the other arms of state. In crafting judgments, it is the duty of the court to go far enough, but not too far. Where the line is to be drawn is not arbitrary. It is dictated by the constitutional, by constitutional interpretation, not by any other considerations, not by judicial whim, not by fear of or undue deference to the other arms of state, not, as I have said, by public opinion. Matters that come before the court are often complex and of great significance. The court has a colossal responsibility to ensure that it delivers to society a constitutional dispensation in which the rights, values, and principles enshrined in the Constitution come to fruition in a manner which is of value and accords while the Constitutional Court exists to adjudicate legal principles, a lot can and should be done by the citizenry, including you, the learners. The participation by the public on, con on a continuous basis provides vitality to the functioning of representative democracy. Beyond this, citizens must also play an active role in litigating on constitutional issues. It is through this that the Constitutional Court and indeed other courts will be afforded an opportunity to perform in accordance with their mandate. Courts do not take up issues of their own accord. I remember recently in the context of the Sasa dispute that concerned whether and how social grants would be paid in the month of April this year. One journalist critically pronounced that it was the Constitutional Court that was to blame. According to the journalist, the Constitutional Court had sat idly by and not done anything with the result that social grant recipients were then facing the possibility of not receiving their social grants for that month. Of course, that was wrong. With the exception of necessary follow-up in matters where supervisory orders have been made, in our legal system, no court initiates litigation. Fortunately for us, 
a legal academic came to our rescue and explained exactly this to the journalist. Like this journalist, some members of the public tend to think of the Constitutional Court as a legal savior that can be relied on to soup in of its own accord and with a judgment save the South African public from all human rights violations and abuses of power. At the very outset, there needs to be a legal dispute which must translate to a court case. This requires the identification of an issue by somebody out there. It does not take legal training for an ordinary individual to realize that there has been a violation of the Constitution. I want to assure you that as rational beings, each and every one of us has an innate ability to tell when something is wrong. We each have an inbuilt radar that alerts us to all that is wrong around us. What we differ on is the energy or appetite to do something about the rights violation we have identified. Some of us are by nature diffident and easily accepting of their lot. Others, on the other hand, are assertive. Unsurprisingly, the Constitution in Section 38 does sanction the championing of the causes of others. Litigation is an extremely expensive undertaking. The unfortunate reality is that overwhelmingly, it is litigation that is conducted by lit legal practitioners that has a better chance of achieving the required results. Legal representation appears to be the better option. The problem is that the cost is so prohibitive that it is no exaggeration to say, in the case of many, it makes the fundamental right of access to court enshrined in the Constitution illusory. How then do I suggest that those who cannot afford litigation should play the role of bringing constitutional violations to courts? Therefore, it should be all that much easier for you to heed my call for actively lending a hand towards the fulfillment by the Constitutional Court of its mandate of ensuring that the Constitution is upheld and protecting the rights enshrined in it. It is not enough for you to hear of a Constitutional Court judgment on the radio or to witness it on TV and think, thank goodness someone did something about that. Do something yourselves. Although said in a different context, the words of Chimamanda Ngozi Adikie, a Nigerian author, are quite apt. She says, minister to the world in a way that can change it. Minister radically in a real, active, practical, get your hands dirty way, close quote. I wish the teams all the best in the competition and I wish all the learners the best in their upcoming examinations. Thank you all.